Welcome back to the Soul Deep Science Podcast. I'm your host, Trey Brock, joined as always by Dr. G.C. Dillsaver. Today we're going to be talking about fear. And just to start us out, Doc, could you give us a brief definition of what fear is? Probably not a brief one. What would your brief definition be? My brief definition of fear? I would say that uh, it'd be you're you know you're scared you're scared of something you're afraid of something of some sort of some something that you can't do anything about. Oh, you you scared and afraid? Uh, the synonyms for fear, so you can't really do that. Okay, so a better definition than that would be fear, fear, fear. fear. You're scared. You're I don't know afraid. if it's a Webster or not. Is it a Webster? I don't know. It's, it's a Webster, obviously. The fear is. So I don't know what Webster would say what we think it is. It'd probably give a better Maybe definition than I just gave. Maybe something like anticipating a harm, a, a, a negative consequence, something negative, anticipation of a negative thing, um, awareness of a negative thing that that is that is felt physically. Okay. But so I mean, okay. maybe something like that, but. It's, it's going to be something that has a, it, because fear is a passion, uh, an emotion. So again, all passion and emotions are based on the chief passion of love, which is both a physiological experience and, and also a pure intellectual choice. So it's that hinge virtue and the virtue in which all the, um, I mean, all other, the hinge passion and the passion which all other passions are tied to. So fear is then going to be something that is a response to something that threatens that which we love. Yeah, so it'd be you're you're, you're responding to say that again, the last the last thing you just said one more time. So fear then would be the you you feel you fear the losing or having harm or a threat to something you love. You so it's not so it's it. fear fear is neutral. It's not good or bad because you can love something that's not that's not good. You can also love something that that's is. Right. Yeah, well, we should. Yeah, absolutely. That's right. Yeah, sure. Fear can be a good thing. You know, you fear God. That's a natural virtue. Fear God. Um, so, yeah, it's a, uh, it's not a bad thing. Fear is a good thing. It, it preserves us. But what are we trying to preserve? Sure. And it, it has to do with, I guess there's a level of uncertainty there. The fear, because the way you explained in the beginning, you're anticipating something, uh, maybe a loss of, uh, with regard to something that you love a good. Um, so there's a level of uncertainty there and that's where the fear might come from. Well, I think there's some uncertainty is, is yes, yeah, can be very fearful that known that adds element of fear to it. Um, but of course it can be very well known. It can be, a uh, someone holding a bat over your head and you know, and you know exactly what you, what, what you fear is that, that bat coming down your head. Yeah. So it's, um, so it's, 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 so it's, but the key is it's what you love and the fear then to be tied to what you love. And so, um, love is always going to be key. And by the way, love is also what overcomes fear. Perfect. Love casts out all fear. That's right. So today we're going to, we're going to get into, uh, the, the fear of failure and how that relates to the egoistic passions in psychomoralytics. We talk a lot about fear of failure, not just fear of failure, but just fear in general. Um, but Doc, can you explain to us the relationship between fear of failure, which I think everybody everybody understands, everybody knows what I'm talking about when I say a fear of failure, even people who have no... Uh, now, obviously, not religious people. Anybody understands that, and the relation between fear, fear of failure, and the egoistic passions. What's the what's the connection between the two? So the in the fear of failure, um, if it's a 
a fear of failure can be a good thing too. You know, we should we don't we don't want to fail our family. Um, you know, we don't want to fail God. And that feels like it was sufficient, but it's it's still an element there, you know, of, of already ordered love. Because why do we really want to um, serve our family or God is because we love them. So it's going to be based on love. And do I love them out of fear for love of them? And that's, a, that's, that's a totally righteous and good fear. If, however, I fear full of myself, and that actual fear full of myself stops me from serving my family or God properly because am I, it's an overwhelming task or maybe it's the odds are against me um, or what have you, then that can debilitate me. That fear can debilitate me from from serving them. So my, that, in that case, my self-love and my fear of my self-love being hurt, my pride being humiliated is going to impede me from doing the right thing. So and if some people do think the right, the right, do the right thing because of fear. And that is, they, 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 they obey the laws, they do this, they do they go to work, blah, 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 because they fear getting in trouble or feel humiliation. And so that keeps things at bay. And but even in, in, in the faith, uh, an imperfect uh, faith or an imperfect contrition is based on that same sort of fear, fear of hell, what have you, but it's imperfect. And because we're perfect contrition, perfect faith is based on love. And that's the real generator of courage, true courage, is love, not fear, of course. So um, it's that, so it has, it's a dual sword there, but it's, it's you know, what you love more. And it's a, there you find out then what is your choice? You know, God or the good or um, do I love that more than I love myself? And... As we talked about before, the human person, his vocation is to assent to that truth and love it as the good. That's his human vocation. That's the specific difference of the human person. So um, we have to overcome fear. So what you're saying is that fear is obviously not bad, but when that is our sole motivation... Again, not bad, but imperfect would be the word that you would use because the motivator, the fuel that we are looking for to live a fully human life is that active motive. It's love. It's that active passion of love that is pushing us through our day, pushing us through our life rather than you know, the more passive, you know, scared, afraid, I'm, I'm in fear of this or that. So is that a decent way of putting it? Sure. Yeah, sure. That's good. Now, I want to enter into the realm of uh, um, in the mental health system industry, uh, we hear a lot about anxiety. Um, it's not even just in mental health. You hear, it, you hear it all over the place. People use it. And I think that a lot of times people, and I've used it many times where I don't even know what it means. Anxiety this, anxiety that, I have anxiety the relationship between fear and anxiety in psychomoralytics it's defined um uh, simply it's defined as a fear of reality would be anxiety can you break that down for us a little bit doc because again it's i think it's a completely overused term anxiety and people don't really know what it means um so if you could break that down for us a little bit yeah, well, of course, it's physiological anxiety. So, um, and that can, that's a feeling that keyed upness, you know, whatever, the stomach is tired, how it have you. So, um, you know, that's, it can be a proper response. It can be a response to an actual situation. Like, you know, before you go into a, a big game, right? You, 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 you're, 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 you're tense, you're tired, you, you, your body's pumped. And you feel that that's part of that anxiety thing. It doesn't be negative. You know, it could be you pump, you're, you're on alert. Um, and, but, you know, we often then want to interpret it, you know, one way or the other. I mean, a person can actually then experience a physiological um, anxiety or hyperness 
um, and that has no trigger outside of himself. It could be just something just physiological, hormonal, to be eight. It could be um, it could be a drug. And they uh, did a study back in the day. I'm in the '80s when they did cool studies like this. But uh, they had two groups um, of people that a psychologist did this. Uh, they uh, got these two groups and they um, they had one group watch uh, a, a comedy, you know, like comedy, something romantic comedy maybe. And then they had uh, another group watch a horror movie, you know, a slasher movie. And so and then those two groups um, Joined, uh, adjourned to a, to different rooms, and they had a little get together, party, drinks, and food, and, um, and the uh, but but before they did that, these they were before they left the theater, they were all given actual injections of norepinephrine, you know, which speeds the body up, and so adrenaline, you know, and so they were, so they were all like they were feeling that the physiological anxiety something was going on but was it what what how do we interpret it well interestingly enough they found the the the, the group that w w saw the slasher movie that was a really depressed downer party and no one was laughing you know people kind of left you know eventually and they weren't just stuff feeling good There's, they weren't happy you know it wasn't the other party they had a great time <laughs> they were part of that great so we interpret our feelings in a certain way. And what happens is that, you know, it's our, it's our pride and self-love, that ego is the complex that can interpret things as well. Feelings. Feelings don't determine how we respond in our spiritual nature, but um, they can be catalysts for it. But whether if I feel physiologically depressed or if you're physiologically up, I don't have to at the same time act um, in a depressive or self-pitying manner or in a manic manner, you know, where I just you know, feel like I have license to do whatever I want to do. So it's it's the grounding nonetheless. So recognizing the physiological is different than, than the psychological. But ultimately, the psychological is only going to fear what? Humiliation. And that's physical pain. The human person is ultimately humiliation. It's that you know, when's it going to stop? This, that. It's, that's why that human pain and suffering is much deeper than an animal's pain who's just in the moment of the pain, the physiological pain. So um, so that's that, that fear, that anxiety that comes when, in this level, the soul when it fears the humiliation of reality. And so it's anxious. And therefore, it says... You know, I'm going to respond in either in a fight or flight mechanism to preserve myself, my pride and self-love. So, and then you can have all sorts of manifestations of that anxiety. It can be, you know, yeah, you can fall into a, a real flight response, you know, go into a deep depression, or you can fly into a real fight response, and you can you know, totally manic, what have you. So, you know, there's all responses there. But the key being then, though, that we don't want to react. We don't want to allow our pride and self-love to be dominant. And again, if that perfect love casts out all, all fear, the love of the good and the truth, that rational, volitional, in my day, reason and, and loving ability will give us the strength to be unbound from the egoistic passions and allow them then to be abnegated by way of humiliation um, and free us then to serve the true and the good because we have gained courage from loving that good and choosing to love the good over the loss of that false self. I want to, um, the, the analogy you drew earlier with uh, sports, and maybe this will fall short, but the you see it in sports all the time with regard to anxiety. So anxiety is this fear of the uh, fear of reality, fear, fear, fear of the humiliation that reality uh, uh, entails. 
in sports, you know, you'd see it in something like a uh, an athlete uh, afraid to perform because he believes that he's not going to perform to the you know maybe uh, to the standards that his father wants, or because he's in a, in front of if he's at a, the college level or something like that, then you know playing in front of all those people, he's, he's afraid that he's going to fail in front of all of those people. Um, so anxiety could arise there. And I, I want to use this as a segue into what we're going to talk about next with regard to coping mechanisms. But you see it all the time in sports. A lot of these guys will, they will fake injuries uh, because the anxiety really does get to them. You see it all the time. Um, and I mean, is that a decent analogy with regard to anxiety? Is somebody who's so overwhelmed by the pressure, so overwhelmed by the thought that they're going to fall short uh, in the eyes of their dad or their parents or the crowd that. Oh, yeah. That- it's totally debilitating, you know, because, again, yeah, the athlete is going to be someone who's, well, nine times out of ten doing it for his pride and self love. It, that motivates him to sacrifice, motivates him to accept certain humiliation so they can be grandized by being victorious, making a team, what have you. But um, the uh, the point being is that it is still a, um, uh, that can be so, it can be an engine that seeking aggrandizement, love of self, you know, can go overcome fear too, but not ultimately, and so, but it can. If you're so, if you're arrogant, you have to have a little arrogance, uh, you know, as, as a player, that you're good, right? I mean, you know, hey man, you know, you, you, know, you want to try to make a team, you know, and all the head games people playing, you know, and so what, man, you know, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna kick your, no matter what, man, if I have to. And that's, you know, so that's the way it is, right? You know, that's, but that's all pride and self love posturing, but you really gotta believe it. And in, go in and have the right mi- mindset. Because if you're fearfully going to feel like that, then that pride and self love is becoming debilitating. See, um, however, at the same time, that's why a lot of you know the great athletes are proverbially in the very vicious lives. You know, after sports, and as we've talked about before in sports, that uh, the uh, clinical studies have shown that that the further you go in athletics and, and um, higher levels of competition, the more you become immoral. That means the more you put yourself first above anything else and winning above anything else. Right. And the, so we talked about fear. We talked about anxiety. What I want to ask you, doc is, because in psychomoralytics, you're really pushing the therapist. You're pushing somebody uh, to have a sort of disgust. And you talk about this in your book. You talk about talk about them having a disgust for uh, their enslavement to the to the coping mechanisms that they're holding on to. So what I want to ask is, what what are those? What are typical coping mechanisms that you see? Um, and how do you help somebody overcome them? Because is it correct to say that, okay, somebody fears something, there's a level of anxiety there, and instead of choosing to embrace reality and suffer well through something, they're choosing to do something else other than that, and uh, that results in misery for that person. Um, uh, what are some, I guess, common coping mechanisms that people uh, you know, that people use in order to avoid you know, uh, the tough and uh, strenuous and the struggles of this life that they, you know, ought to embrace, that we all ought to embrace? Well, um, so the struggles of life that we all ought to embrace. Um, well, I'm not, sure, I'm not sure about that premise yet, but anyway, but be as it may. So, but, but a little bit put a different way. People who don't live a fully human life that is has the courage to live that life, which means, yes, to enter into the depths of sorrows and the heights of joy, enter into the overwhelmingness of a human existence, enter into the overwhelmingness of uh, of loving, you know, without counting cost, of, of this 
that is what they're called to do. And so there should be like, is there a desire for that? And, and then I've been impeded in doing that. And I want to live a life that is not dominated by my fears. And so coping mechanisms, that is, if you will, that's the, um, that's the lukewarm, you know, those that want to have control. And if you want to have control of your life, if you don't want to be overwhelmed by, by passion, you know, the sorrows and joys, if you don't want to be humiliated, then you have to close yourself off to reality. And you have to close yourself off to certain realities that are evil. So the, the innocent bystander that allows evil to happen. How much evil will allow to happen? Why? Because we don't want to get involved. We don't want to. Um, we're afraid of getting in trouble. And so fear really, you know, we, it dominates people. We see how during the lockdown, how that, that fear, how people are manipulated by their fears. And it can be a virus. It can be anything. You know, it can, it can, it, 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 you know it's the power of the police state. Yeah, people are very fearful. They don't have courage. And that's why the human race is being enslaved. That's why humanity, that's why the human person is being reduced down to a non-transcendent entity. But they're, because, they're, um, they're choosing, we're, we're, they're choosing to do that, right? I mean, when we talk about coping mechanisms, I'm trying to think of a practical example. And, you know, you brought up the, uh, all the, the, the lockdowns, you know, the people who went along with that and people who go along with that, they put the mask on or uh, even, you know, they get the shot. And they don't really believe what they're, none of those people seem to believe what they were doing was actually correct, was actually right. I mean, so that'd be a coping mechanism. What, what are they doing? They're, they're going along with it for some reason other than the fact that they actually think this is the right thing to do. Well, it, well, the, the right thing to do for them, I would say them, but is to, Follow what the state tells you to do, what the authorities tell you to do. That's their, they, that's their safety net. That's that's where they live by. It's the state, the nanny state takes care of them, and they they fear. You know, they they hang on to that with all their might. Now, and the reason being is that that is their worldview. That is all they believe in. Ultimately, I mean, they, you know, even if they say they're Christian, whatever else, but oh, the state is, trumps everything. Now, we know that's not true for Christianity. You know, for the holy faith transcends and in fact you know countermands the, the political order but that's what most people don't have that sensibility so and that's where the that's where that uncertainty would pop up is when you do have a belief system that transcends the state or transcends something of this world well what does that necessitate that necessitates you're going to live in accordance with something again that transcends that 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 worldly order and that's scary because right. it's not just transcending it but it's opposing it it's going it's going right. in an opposite direction which is which as you talked about earlier you know you might get in trouble you might you know well you will get in trouble and, and, you, and you and you 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 choose to be disenfranchised from that power curve from that, from that power structural political professional, what have you, mental health system, all that stuff. But because what? Now, that's the fear. Because, but people, right? and the here is what, and, and people fear deeply is this rejection or being out of the in-group. It's going to be that. And, and so being rejected by the state or by your profession or is, is, is incredibly powerful tool to keep people in line. So every I get every day every every psychologist out there every 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 medical doctor out there, those guys are you know, they're in fear of you know losing their license. Now medical doctors supposedly, you know, there's a little more hard science to you know saying hey you malpractice. Although now you know getting, with the lockdown they weren't even allowing second opinions. You know so that's getting bad too. Well, with psychology it's all just you know smoke and mirrors. So. If you're not politically correct, they're going to do that to you. They're going to they're going to shut you down. There's, there's nothing really. There's no hard science there. So, 
But that's fear. That keeps you in line. You know, well, you lose your livelihood. And, you're gonna, and, and there, people live in fear. Because what? What happens to the state? What's the state do? The state will they'll kill you. You know, not, you know they, they, they may shoot you or, you know, or they may just cut off your bank account. You know, I'm just all happy enough, you know, now. Now that's a new thing, right? They're going to take food out of the mouth of your children. That's the reality. So this is where we are, the fear. We're so dependent. And we're dependent on something. And if you don't love something that transcends the power curve, be that the image of God and other people, you know, be that, you know, God himself, then you're never going to have the courage to transcend that political order or that power order. It's all is based on ultimately on violence and power. That's what it is. And egoistic manipulation. You're not going to have the courage to, to leave that and, 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 and die to yourself for a higher good. But you have to have a higher good. And if, if the higher is only the fact that I don't want to be enslaved. I want to be a free person that, that is not dominated by his fears, but rather is motivated, motivated by his love. Yeah. And I think some of the, uh, I don't know, I, I can't help but be a little bit inspired by some of these pro athletes who, you know, you, uh, was it Novak Djokovic, one of the, the tennis player who he just refused to get the shot. Same with, a guy like Aaron Rodgers or Kyrie Irving, you see that, and it's a, you know it's a little bit of natural natural virtue, I think, where they're just you know something. I don't know, I don't know what's motivating those those three, um, but it's it's something that's you know causing them to go against the grain, and so you can't help but have a little bit of a appreciation for that. But um, yeah. hey, you know, let's, let's, let's say they, they have the luxury to do that, right? Right, exactly. They're not. <laughs> They're not exactly yeah. in, in financial trouble if they uh, uh, if they yeah. if, if they choose to do that. So um, yeah, and the, uh, and the Packers weren't going to fire that guy, right? So well, no, no that. way. <laughs> I think he's on the Jets now. I just saw a clip of him. So oh, is it, oh really? Is yeah, he, he's still in the league. Just, just, and then and then Djokovic, he um, he was in Rome last I saw. He's at the uh, what is it? The Italian Open. I got to check up and see that's going on right now. So I wonder how he's doing, but. We'll wrap up. Uh, we'll wrap up on that point, Doc, of the importance of having a a higher good, but yeah, the highest good that motivates everything that you do, and that good God Himself transcends this world, and it you know it causes you, it gives you the courage to live in this world, not enslaved to anything, uh, but but fully passionate, fully in love with 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 doing His will. And that's what pushes us forward. And it, you know, oftentimes it will put us in opposition to these worldly powers. So, yeah, I mean, it draws us forward. It's that love of God, and He's um, and again, that, that love, uh, a human life, um, you know, of fear, you know, is um, is is really probably the the worst, you know, possible existence, right? And and so if I seek to live an existence without anything that is fearful, I'm going to live a very narrow existence. I'm just going to use. So, and I'll, you know, we're not supposed to not have fear. You're supposed to not allow fear to make you a coward. There's both a coward and a hero are both afraid, but the hero loves a higher good more than loves himself, his cause, his faith, his family. Whereas the, Coward of himself when he loves his cause or his family or God. Amen. We'll wrap up there. That's it for this week's Soul Deep Science Podcast. Doc, thank you for joining us. We'll see you guys next week.